The proof of stake is a consensus mechanism used by a lot of cryptocurrencies today. You may be wondering what is a consensus mechanism? Well, any cryptocurrency in the world needs to make sure that no one can spend the same coins twice. To do this, we use something called a consensus mechanism. Simply the word consensus means the majority agreeing on something, and a mechanism is the way or method we use to reach this majority agreement. So, a consensus mechanism in any crypto is the way computers on the network decide which transactions to approve and which transactions to deny. To be able to understand the proof of stake, you must first understand the double spending problem. So, for example, suppose that Taylor has only 0.5 Ether in his wallet. He buys a product from Bob and sends in the 0.5 Ether. And before the transaction gets confirmed, he buys another product from Alice and sends her the same 0.5 Ether. Seconds after the first transaction, let's say transaction 1 was entered into block A and transaction 2 was entered into block B. How can the network decide which transaction to approve and confirm and which transaction to reject? Well, the Ethereum network currently solves this problem by using the proof-of-work consensus mechanism. In this system, each block of transactions has a complex mathematical problem attached to it, and all computers on the network race to solve this problem. This process is called mining. The block that gets solved first is confirmed and added to the blockchain, with all transactions in this block approved. And the computer that first solved this block gets rewarded with Ethereum. Let's say the network confirmed block A first. When the computers try to validate block B, they reject Alice's transaction and prevent Taylor from spending his money twice. This proof-of-work system is a very secure consensus mechanism used by a lot of cryptos today, like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum. However, it uses insane amounts of power and electricity to solve these complex mathematical problems while also having considerably slow transactions and high transaction fees. We have a full detailed video on the proof of work and how it works. You can watch it if you want to learn more about the proof of work. The proof of stake, on the other hand, is an alternative to the proof of work, but with much cheaper transactions, faster speeds, and much lower power and energy usage. In this video, you will learn what is the proof of stake consensus mechanism, how exactly proof-of-stake works. What are the advantages of using proof-of-stake compared to the proof-of-work? And finally, some drawbacks of the proof-of-stake. We have included timestamps, so you can easily skip to any part you want. So, let's get started. The proof of stake is a consensus mechanism introduced in 2011 on the Bitcoin Talk Forum by a user with the name Quantum Mechanic. It was introduced as an alternative to proof of work to solve the problem of the very high energy usage in proof of work. Proof of stake is currently used by Solana, Cardano, Algorand, with Ethereum also planning to switch from proof of work to proof of stake in 2022. To be able to verify transactions in the proof-of-work system, miners buy very powerful hardware devices to solve the complex mathematical problems and get the mining rewards. In proof-of-stake, on the other hand, the people who verify transactions are not called miners, they are called validators. And to be able to verify transactions and earn rewards in a proof-of-stake system, they need to lock up some of their own crypto in the network. The specific amount needed varies between cryptocurrencies. In Ethereum 2.0, for example, validators need to lock up 32 Ether in order to be able to verify transactions and create new blocks on the Ethereum blockchain. If you don't have 32 Ether, but still want to be a validator, you can join a pool and deposit your Ethereum with other people to take a share of the rewards earned by the pool. This process of locking up crypto by validators to earn rewards is called staking. These validators earn the transaction fees on the network as their rewards. And we will release a full video about it soon. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. In the proof-of-work mechanism, 
Miners race against each other to solve the next block and earn the mining reward. The miner with the most powerful hardware has the highest chance of solving the next block faster than the other miners. However, in the proof-of-stake mechanism, there is no competition or race between validators. When a new block of transactions needs to be validated, the network chooses a validator to verify this block and earn the transaction fees as a reward. Then, the other validators will either approve his work or reject it if he validated faulty transactions. We will get to how the network chooses the validator in a minute. But first, what happens if the validator approved fraudulent transactions to try to send himself some coins, for example? Well, the other validators on the network will review his block of transactions. If any fraud transactions are detected, he will lose some or all of his staked crypto. This is called slashing. The validator can also lose his staked crypto if, for example, he didn't set up his node or computer correctly, or if his node goes offline for a while, or even if he had a bug or a software crash. Now, let's move on to how the network chooses the validators. You should know that each cryptocurrency has its own protocol to choose the validators. But what is common between most of these protocols is that the validator is chosen randomly with some other factors that can increase your chance of being chosen by the network, such as the amount of crypto staked and for how long you have been staking your crypto. The larger the amount of staked crypto, the higher your chance of getting chosen. Also, the longer you have been staking your crypto, the higher your chance of getting chosen by the network. You can think of it like a draw. So for example, we will choose a validator between Taylor, John, Bob, and Alex. Each one of them has only one entry to the draw at first. Taylor has the highest amount of crypto state, so his chances increase by giving him three additional entries, two additional entries for John, one for Bob, and nothing for Alex, as he has the smallest amount of crypto state. Now we need to consider for how long they have been staking their crypto. John have staked for the longest time. So he gets additional three entries, two for Bob and one for Taylor. And also, nothing more for Alex, as he has just recently started staking his crypto. So, before we pick the winner, theoretically, John has the highest chance of getting chosen, as he has a large amount of crypto staked for a long time. So, he seems reliable and trustworthy to the network. But still, any one of these four validators can be chosen, but with smaller chances. So, we pick up our validator, and Bob is our draw winner which gives Bob the permission to verify the new block of transaction and earn the reward. In case of Ethereum 2.0, the validator that verifies the new block earn about 0.005 ETH. You may be wondering, what if I stake my crypto and set up a node, but don't get chosen by the network? Will I still earn any rewards? Well, before Bob can earn any reward or add his block to the blockchain, other validators like you, need to approve his work first and make sure he didn't approve any fraudulent transactions or made an error while verifying the block. This is called attestation. When you attest correctly that the block is accurate, you also earn an attestation reward. But it is considerably low compared to Bob. On the Ethereum 2.0, the attestation reward is approximately 0.00002 ETH and you can increase it if you voted correctly after a short period of time. In case Bob approved fraudulent transactions or made an error during the creation of the block, he gets penalized by slashing some or all of his staked crypto or by locking up his coins and preventing him from creating new blocks for a while. Any validator detects an error in the block created by Bob gets a very high reward from the network, approximately 0.0625 ETH this reward is called the whistleblower reward. You can also get penalized by voting incorrectly on blocks or by going offline and missing some blocks. Keep in mind that all these rewards amounts change frequently according to the conditions of the network, such as the price of Ethereum and the total amount staked on the network. Another method for choosing the validators is the coin age selection method. This method does not have any randomization in choosing the validators. In this system, the amount of crypto staked is multiplied by the days these coins have been staked to get the coin age score for each validator. The validator with the highest score is chosen, 
After he adds the block to the blockchain, his score is reverted to zero, and he needs to wait for a while before raising his score and getting chosen again. This is done to prevent some old validators with large stake to have control of the blockchain and be able to centralize its decisions. Like we said before, each cryptocurrency has its own protocol to choose its validators and to keep its blockchain secure. You should know that if after a while, you want to unstake your coins and withdraw your money plus the rewards, you won't be able to withdraw it immediately. Your money will be locked for a while, so the network can still penalize you if they detected something bad you did before unstaking your coins. This locking period may range from 5 to 7 days, or it can go up to a month. It depends on the network rules. Let's now move on to the advantages of using the proof-of-stake mechanism. So, the most obvious benefit is the very low energy and power consumption compared the proof of work, as it doesn't require validators to buy expensive computer hardware that consume insane amounts of electricity to solve complex mathematical problems. The validator that gets chosen consume energy to verify the block, and the other validators use way less energy to vote on his work. So, it is much more environment-friendly than proof of work. Ethereum developers, for example, claim that the Ethereum network will consume 0.4% of the energy used by the Visa network to verify the same 100,000 transactions when they switch from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. Another advantage of using proof-of-stake is the considerably faster transactions compared to proof-of-work. This is mainly because proof-of-stake eliminates the need for solving a complex mathematical problem that all miners in the world take 10 minutes to solve in the case of the Bitcoin network. So. What are the drawbacks of using proof-of-stake? First, although validators lock up their crypto into the network and they should help keep the blockchain secure to avoid losing their money, still, the security of proof-of-stake has not been tested as the proof-of-work. Also, using the proof-of-stake is very risky in new cryptocurrencies with small number of validators. As a group of people may stake an amount of crypto that equals 51% or more of all staked crypto on the network. If they succeed in doing that, they will get total control over the blockchain. This is known as the 51% attack, and it is very unlikely to happen to a large popular crypto like Ethereum. But the risk is higher with smaller cryptocurrencies. So for example, if a crypto used the proof of stake mechanism, and the total value of state coins is 200 million US dollars, the hackers would need to have 102 million US dollars state, which is a lot. But if it is a totally new crypto with the total value of coin state equals 2 million US dollars, the hackers would need to have only 1 million 20,000 US dollars state. This is why many cryptos start using the proof of work, then transition to proof of stake as the network gains more attention. This is what Ethereum is doing right now, with the full transition to proof of stake expected to be completed in 2022. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about the proof of stake and how it works. And if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.